Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Strange Wonders. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Hope you don't get crabby today, because today we're talking about the final member of the crustacean trio that anyone cares about, since coconut crabs and hermit crabs are their own thing, and most of the things in the shrimp video weren't really related. But anyway, time for crabs. Crabs are crustaceans belonging to the Brachyura infraorder. Crabs are best well known thanks to their weird oval shape, and like all crustaceans, they have ten legs and claws. Crabs are also notable for the fact that they move by walking sideways due to how their legs are structured. Crabs are omnivores, typically going after low effort food like algae or worms. Really, anything that won't put up too much of a fight. Some crabs are semi-aquatic, capable of coming to shore where they're able to breathe as long as their gills are moist, which they help by foaming at the mouth. And there's also freshwater crabs and crabs that spend all their time out of water as well. Some notable crabs include fiddler crabs, who are famous for their sexual dimorphism. Males have one claw that is huge compared to their other. This claw is used to attract mates, where females will uh, be attracted to the male who waves the claw around the best, I guess. Or something like that. It's something like that, but I don't really know how to explain it. Yeah. And if you're wondering why they're called fiddler crabs, it's because of the fact that when they dig, it looks like they're stringing a fiddle thing. Yeah. Then you got arrow crabs, who are named that way because their body's triangular, like an arrow. Then there's ghost crabs, a mostly terrestrial species that's capable of changing color, but they're most well known for the fact that they eat baby sea turtles. Because remember kids, if an animal kills a cute animal, then they're irredeemable monsters. Because remember, in nature, you're not allowed to kill cute things, because that's the law of humanity. Animals have to obey our sense of morality, because remember, if they don't, then they must die, and they're evil. There's decorator crabs, more of a description than a species or classification. These are crabs that like to put stuff on their back to hide from predators. Some will even put anemones on their back in order to hurt anything that tries to eat them. There's the terrifying spider crabs, who have absolutely gigantic legs. Uh, the Japanese spider crab is also the longest arthropod in terms of length, so that's fun. And then there's Christmas Island red crabs. A purely terrestrial species, these guys live on Christmas Island, which is south of Indonesia. They're a purely terrestrial species, which they're able to do thanks to the humidity of the island. The most notable thing about them is that when it's time to breed, every single crab on the island sets out on an expedition to the sea, covering the island in red as they make their march. When they reach the sea, they lay their eggs and fertilize them, allowing swarms of larvae to emerge and then make the trek back to the jungle to repeat the cycle anew. You know, for some reason a few years back, I was weirdly obsessed with these guys. I don't know why either. So yeah. That's crabs for you. Card time! First we got the spiny king crab. Technically this isn't a true crab since king crabs aren't part of the crab group, but uh, you know, they didn't really fit in with any of the other crustaceans, so I'm talking about them here. So yeah, 10 out of 10. Now spider crabs, on the back it says there are more than 900 species. I was not able to find a source for this claim. I'm not able to find a direct list about how many species of spider crabs there are, but I feel like something like this would be easier to fact check. So because of this dubious claim that I really cannot find any source for, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Arrow crabs, for some reason, they made it look absolutely ginormous on the card. Like, why is it so zoomed in? Like, no other creature is like this. Uh, whatever. Arrow crabs, it claims that they impale prey with their head, but like the 900 species thing, I wasn't able to find a source for this, or video footage, or anything. So once again, 9 out of 10. Fiddler crabs are in tiny terrors for some reason. Why are fiddler crabs in tiny terrors? What do they do that is so terrifying? Is it the claw? It's probably the claw. Anyway, uh, fiddler crabs list them as a genus, even though they are a family, so 9 out of 10. The Christmas Island Red Crab card is fine, but the Ghost Crab card makes the same error as the fiddler crab list a genus when it's a family name. So yeah, 9 out of 10 too. You know, why are ghost crabs in Strange Wonders but fiddler crabs are tiny terrors? I mean, fiddler crabs are the strange looking ones, but ghost crabs are the ones famous for eating turtles. So, shouldn't they be swapped around? Is it the color changing thing? Probably. Or is it the fact that they're purely terrestrial? Who knows? But, if I were in charge, I would definitely swap them around. 
As for human relations, crabs are a popular food. They're not as expensive as lobster, and they're more expensive than shrimp, so they're kind of like a medium there. I've had crab before. It kind of tastes like chicken, except really stringy. That's what I think. And also more fishy. That's just my opinion, though. Crabs show up a decent amount of times in media, and people who go to beaches are afraid of getting pinched by them, which I can relate to, since whenever I went to the beach as a kid, I was afraid of having my feet on the ground because I was afraid a crab would pinch me. In fact, I was genuinely more afraid of crabs than sharks. I was a weird kid. But I was surprisingly not able to dig up much about crab and human relationships, because really, they're just kind of animals that exist for most people that are just there. Their food, and sometimes they show up to pinch things, but that's about it, really. Well, that's all for this episode of Strange Wonders. Goodbye!